Please be seated. Your Excellency, Namgyal Kampa, High Commissioner for India to Kenya, Mr. P. V. Sambasya Rao, Dr. Narendra Reddy, Mr. Alejandro Grana, Vice President, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, Hamujambo. That is the Kenyan greeting in Kiswahili. Um, And I wish to say, also have a good morning to you all. I am delighted and honored to join you here today for the Sri Satya Sai International Organization Conference. Let me, on behalf of the government of Kenya and the people of Kenya, appreciate the organizers and you all for choosing Nairobi to host this auspicious event, which brings together delegates from all the countries of the world where you have a footprint. I am informed that there are over 300 international delegates participating in this conference. So I welcome you all to Nairobi, our beautiful city, and to Kenya, which is the financial and technological capital of the East African region. As you embark on your discussions during this conference, let us reflect on the universal spiritual teachings and values inherited from Sri Satya Sai Baba, who founded this global spiritual and humanitarian organization over half a century ago. Your service to humanity through education, medical camps, and community service have touched the lives and hearts of millions of people across the world. Through your work, you have become key partners with governments, the private sector, and the civil society in improving the livelihoods of the very needy in our society. We are proud of the work you have done in many African countries where your volunteers are engaged with the local communities in activities such as school feeding and medical camps. Here in Kenya, you have planted over 3,000 trees in various parts of the country, including Bungoma, Busia, Machakos and Vihiga counties. Your partnerships with the local schools, community-based organizations, and other stakeholders on the ground is an important contribution to economic and social transformation. I applaud you for this great initiative, particularly because it supports our government's ambitious campaign to plant 15 billion trees by 2032 to enhance Kenya's adaptation to climate change and its contribution to the global reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. Through these social investment programs, you are helping to improve the livelihoods of Kenyans and contributing to the realization of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. As I conclude, let me take this opportunity to appreciate the organizers for organizing this forum, for growing the spiritual and humanitarian seed that Sri Satya Sai Baba sowed to enhance the survival of humanity. I wish you fruitful deliberations and look forward to outcomes that will shape the future of your service to humanity. Let me just take a couple of minutes to speak 
away from my formal remarks. First, I experienced some of your efforts personally, and there was evidence that came onto the screen. I did not know the statistics, but now I have seen that the few days that the medical volunteers were around in the region, they were able to see or to deal or to treat 5,600 needy individuals in all the countries. That is Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. I want you to just reflect for a moment. If it was the normal process, how many days or months would it take for those people to get the formal appointments in hospitals? I don't know. We all have our countries. You can try and imagine how long it takes to get a doctor's appointment in your individual countries. So 5,600 in just a few days is phenomenal. Now, take another step back and reflect. How many hours were those doctors and volunteers on their feet? It's unbelievable. Ordinarily, you want to sit, you want to lie down, but these professionals were on their feet for hours, unending, nonstop. I had an opportunity to talk to some of them and they said things like, we have been on our feet for something like 18 hours, waiting, dealing with everybody until there was nobody left in the queue. I witnessed it. I thank those professionals and I salute them for a job well done. The logo or the message or the emblem that I've seen and it's out there, it talks of truth, love, peace, good conduct, and non-violence. What more global constitution do you want? It's all there. In just a few words, the entire global constitution, the humanity constitution is there. In Kenya, in the last few days, we have had our share of upheaval because it's a trying moment globally in many different ways. The danger of climate change is looming all over like a dark cloud. The world must look for the silver lining in that dark cloud and help us overcome the challenges of global climate challenges. It is one of the pillars that you talk about under the Siri Baba agenda. We are dealing with poverty. We are dealing with challenges of health care for the millions of people who cannot afford it. We have to work towards dialogue and make sure that there is non-violence. 
our constitution provides for people to express themselves. They did. But of course the constitution does not provide for violent. reaction. But I want to thank you because what has happened to Kenya is not unique. It is happening in different countries too. But I want to thank you specifically that in spite of the upheaval, you still had the courage and determination to have this conference held here in Nairobi. That is a serious manifestation of solidarity and a message that brings out that we all can work together to resolve the issues and challenges that we face as humanity and as countries. We can work together. We should not run away from our problems. We should confront them, but confront them through persuasion, through logic, and through reasoned conversations. So I really commend you because in other circumstances, people would have said the conference is deferred, it's canceled. But you have stood your ground and you're here. The government remains committed to the rule of law, to maintaining law and order, to ensuring that everybody is protected. And in the process, we also open our doors to say that the conversation must continue so that the issues that will arise from time to time can be resolved peacefully through dialogue, and then we can move forward. Our Master of Ceremony has dwelt a lot on AI. Um, and the truth is, technology uh, was a very strong instrument in the communication that the younger people were conveying this time around. So, the message I carry home with me is that um, you have to look very carefully at two things. Look closely at the teachings of Sri Safi Safiya Sai Baba, but also look very closely to AI. <laughs> I think if we can harness those two strong pillars. Uh, we can be able to reach out to a lot of citizens globally. Our statistics show that 68% or 70% of Kenya's population are those that are going to be inclined to AI. The demographics have shifted. It's the young people that are dominant in numbers. But we now must make them dominant also in the ideas and embracing peace and having the long-term solutions and embracing patience as we go forward. And the 68, 78% that is in Kenya demographically as young people is also what is happening in the rest of Africa. It is exactly the same. So there's going to be a challenge in this continent, but through interventions like yours, through conferences like yours, through practical approaches like this, we can make that difference. I step off the podium by acknowledging that one of the institutions that has been prominently featured here, that is the Itando 
Health Center or the Sabatia Hope Center benefited from your partnership. They are here somewhere. I think the nurses from there. The light is hitting me, so I don't know where they may be seated. But I've been told they are in this conference room, and I'm happy that they are here. My plea to you is that as you adopt other centers and other institutions globally, please look favorably at this Itando Health Center, this Hope Center in Western Kenya that would benefit tremendously from the kind of talent, human resource, professional resource, and even financial support to improve what they're doing. It's a partnership between the Catholic Church and ourselves, I'm a Quaker. So we have partnered on the ground. Uh, my family bought the land and donated it. The Catholic Church came up with some of the nurses and sisters and we partnered with some friends also from Spain. But we could do much better with the partnership of the Siri Sagitia Sai. <laughs> Humanitarian touch. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is now my honor and privilege to declare this Siri Sagitia Sai International Organization Conference officially opened. And I thank you all and may God bless you all for the next few days and also when you return to your various countries. Kenya remains a strong, peaceful, democratic country. And our sometimes very, very forceful consultations should not deter you from visiting us in the years to come. Thank you. His Excellency, thank you so much. May we please ask you to wait for a few moments here. Thank you for an amazing address, and thank you for your warm hospitality, for hosting us in the beautiful land of Kenya, um, and thank you for your efforts, as Brother Leela Prasad said, towards social reform and upliftment of the downtrodden. We appreciate your efforts, and thank you so much for having us. We'll call upon Dr. Narendra Nath Reddy for a small token of appreciation, which is a very special gift from our organization to you, to thank you for your time. Asante sana. We will also share a token of appreciation with the High Commissioner by Mr. Leonardo Gutter. We also ask for all dignitaries on stage to please remain 